Thank you for joining us. We are Finding God in Video Games, and in today's episode titled Much Ado About Andor, we might have a few minor spoilers for those who haven't watched the first three episodes of the new Andor series yet. So if you haven't had a chance to watch it, just fair warning, not, not much in terms of spoilers, because as you will see as we go through this article, there's really not that much to spoil. But <laughs> I will say, as a lifelong Star Wars fan, the last several years have been pretty good to me. I mean, the cinematic offerings, yeah, they've been a little bit of a mixed bag. But the live-action television shows and even the animated series that we've been receiving have been hotter than Mustafar in the summertime. You don't say. And sandwiched <laughs> between the excellent Obi-Wan Kenobi series that we just finished and the upcoming adventures we'll get to enjoy of our favorite Mandalorian and Ahsoka and everything that's coming up. Bad Batch Don't will be back soon. Don't even but get me started. But before we get to all those places, we have this new series that's designed to provide some, what I would consider, much-needed exposition on the early days of the Rebellion, featuring Cassian Andor, one of the lead characters from Rogue One. And with the first three episodes all dropping on the same day to introduce us properly to this new series... I went into this show with some pretty high expectations. I mean, I figured we would at least start out with Cassian maybe infiltrating an Imperial Star mm -hmm. Cruiser. Maybe we'd get a couple of scenes with Saw Gerrera to provide a little bit of fan service up front and hook that everybody. Cool. I was really figuring we would see K2SO show up at some point in here, even if it's just a cameo appearance. And, I mean, just trying to hope that I'd get really lucky here. Maybe we'd get a glimpse of Kanan Jarrus or Harrison Dula. Someone from the I mean, Star Wars yeah, Rebels series cool. would have been fun. That I mean, in this cool. early timeline, there are so many possibilities. And with three full episodes to watch that were you know anywhere from 45 to 50 minutes in length, surely there would be some dangerous espionage and some exciting Imperial entanglements in the mix, right? Um, well... Well, you, you, you would be wrong. Because, no, no, uh, actually, none of that, none none of that happened. None at of all. that happened at no, all. No, <laughs> no. Instead, what we received was a deep, intimate look into the life of the lead character, providing some very unexpected details about his childhood and a, a inside look at the relatively mundane activities that he had in his day-to-day -day routine. Now, sure, there was a little action, but honestly, after just finishing watching Boba Fett ride around on Rancor and Mando wielding his Darksaber in their respective series, you know, the stakes on Andor are relatively small in comparison to what we've <laughs> I mean, enjoyed so far. So far. Yeah. And as the credits rolled on the third episode, I still had so many unanswered questions. And the series to this point has not answered any of them. As a matter of fact, they spent a great deal of time answering questions I'm not really sure anyone was asking <laughs> as we headed into this series. I went into this expecting to see the beginning of the Rebel Alliance, and instead, I received a front row seat to a few challenging days in the life of Cassian Andor as he, you know, was having people try to collect his debts that he owed them. But as I considered the first three episodes of this series, and the difference between what I had expected and what I actually received, an uncomfortable truth about more than simply my unrealistic expectations about Andor came to the surface. I was approaching this series in a very similar way that I found myself praying, reading the Bible, and even treating my relationship with the Lord. And I have a feeling many of us have grappled with this exact same struggle. Throughout my life, I've been told by some very well-meaning people that the answer to every question I have in life can be found in the Bible. And while that sounds fantastic, in practice, this hasn't quite happened the way I had hoped. When I faced some challenging crossroads in my life, like what career choice should I make? Should I move to this city or this state? Who should I date? Who should I marry? Or just you know, what way could I serve the Lord the best? I scoured the scriptures looking for answers, and the answers were not exactly provided in the black and white manner that I would have preferred. I mean, I never found a verse that said, Thou shalt spend thine first three years of employment in service to McDonald's. That would be weird. That would be weird. It'd be great <laughs> product placement, and I'm sure 
McDonald's would be very excited about them. Maybe that's in like the new international version or something. Oh my goodness. But <laughs> the message Bible you know, brought to you by McDonald's. I don't know. But, but that, it's not in there. Not in that direct way, certainly. I would pray and I would seek very direct answers to my specific problems in life, but the simple binary responses of yes or no that I was looking for eluded me. And for years, I found myself treating the Lord the same way I was viewing this new Cassie and Andor series. I wanted all the fun benefits of a deep experience without investing the time to truly get to know the lead character of the entire narrative. Jeremiah 9, verses 23, 24, says, Thus says the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, let not the mighty man glory in his might, nor let the rich man glory in his riches, but let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth, for in these I delight. I have foolishly tried to use the Bible as the equivalent of a video game strategy guide in life. You know, flip to the right page, quickly find the solution to the puzzle that I'm currently work working on, say a prayer of thanks, and get right back into the action. I'll pick it up again when I run into another problem I think I can't solve on my own. But the Bible is not simply an answer key to the test that we face in life. It is an introduction to the hero of the story. We were never meant to simply pull out our favorite verses and wield them out of context as some kind of mantra that we follow in life. They are an exploration of the very essence of the Almighty God, a deep exposition into His divine nature, and a pathway into an intimate relationship with Him. He didn't give us the Bible so we could merely find answers to our questions. He protected these sacred texts and ensured their survival over thousands of years so we would have a way to get to know him. And if we want answers to those day-to-day -day questions that we face, as well as the solutions to the larger, life-altering predicaments that we encounter, the reality is that we were never intended to see prayer and Bible study as merely a means to an end. They are the means of getting to know and understand the very heart of our Creator. And as we seek a relationship with Him, we will find that the moment-by-moment -moment guidance that we're looking for will start to become crystal clear. You see that in Matthew 6.33, where Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. So selfishly, I wanted the new Andor series to provide nothing but shock and awe moments that filled in the gaps of time that existed prior to Rogue One. But instead, I discovered a complicated backstory that will help me better understand the motivations behind one of the core participants. I wanted to enjoy the rebellion without understanding the rebel. I was trying to enjoy the depth of the experience with a shallow, surface-level commitment. Andor is nothing like I was expecting it to be. Instead of a wide-angle lens exploring a universe at war, it has brought the camera way down to the grimy streets where the seeds of the rebellion were first planted. And instead of being a distant spectator to the looming conflict that would encompass star systems, I'm seeing the drama unfold at the ground level, getting to know the actual participants who will one day take down an empire. It is going to move a lot slower than I expected, but you know, that's okay. Because when the conflict inevitably goes to those bigger places that it is destined to travel to, those decisions and their ramifications will truly feel earned. And similarly, in our walk with the Lord, we can't expect to simply graze off of his, you know, greatest hits, forge a meaningful relationship with him out of that. Our time spent in prayer and reading his word is meant to be an exploration of him, a never-ending, ever-deepening character study of the unknowable Almighty God. In Acts 16, 26 and 27, when Paul was speaking, he said, He has made from one blood 
every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and determine their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. Now, should we pray to him for guidance on our dilemmas, large and small? Of course we should. In Philippians 4, 6, he told us to do that. Do we find the answers to many of our most pressing questions within his written word? Absolutely. Our daily direction and guidance can often be found in the wisdom of what he has recorded. See that in Psalm 119, 105, when he talks about that his word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. But reducing our relationship with Christ to nothing more than a genie's lamp to be rubbed when we want our wishes granted misses the entire point of all of this. He did everything he has ever done with the intent to provide us with a way to seek him, find him, and truly get to know him. As I'm finding in the slow burn that we're having in the Andor series, we don't really gain much understanding about our heroes during their daring feats of heroism surrounded by spectacular explosions, you know, the, the infamous hero scene where you walk towards the camera and explosions happen behind you. Well, <laughs> they're all fun and exciting, but when the really smoke specific. clears, we still didn't really get to know much about them through that. I will learn more about the early days of the Rebel Alliance by seeing it through the eyes of Cassian Andor than I would have ever gleaned from a bunch of exciting set pieces that provided style without substance. And to see the story the way that Cassian saw it, I must live it through his lens, understanding him as a character, not just a means of providing exposition and answers to my questions. As the prophet Elijah found in his mountaintop experience, the voice of the Lord coming to provide direction. It wasn't found in the excitement of the howling wind or the explosive earthquake that was happening all around him. The voice of the Lord was found in that still, small voice of a loving, caring creator calling out to his child to show us that the answers we are looking for can only be found in the quiet place of truly getting to know him. We'll finish with Jeremiah 29, verses 12 and 13, where the Lord says, then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. We truly hope this has encouraged you today. And if you'd like to connect with us or check out some of our other content, such as our articles, videos, daily devotionals, and gaming streams, we can be found on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok.